Seven Item Stone. I want to talk to you guys about a three-parter episode from season one of Dual Monsters, Face Off. So one day, a little while back, came across an Instagram page called Yu-Gi-Oh! Series. I don't know who runs this page, but dope. I don't know how long before it'll get taken off. I'm sorry if this contributes to it being taken off, because I don't know if they allow that. <laughs> but this guy is chronologically uploading episodes of Dual Monsters from season one onwards. And I was watching this episode clip, right? The last part. And it was Kaiba versus Yugi. Kaiba's been sent there to duel Yugi because he's been captured by Pegasus. He says, if you want Mokuba back, you're going to have to duel Yugi before I just straight up jack his shit. So Kaiba's there, approaches Yugi, says, dude, I got to get my brother back. Okay. I know you got to get your grandpa back. I know Joey's sister wants her eyesight back. All right. But dude, we got to do this right now. And at that point, when things got intense, Yami would always just take control of Yugi's body. The duel starts getting tense. Kaiba starts losing. Kaiba starts getting desperate. And he has this play out in his head. And he realizes there's no other way that this can end. He has to be the one that wins. Your move, Yugi. You can attack my blue eyes again and wipe out my remaining life points. But if you do, the resulting shockwaves might cause me to lose my balance. Don't tempt me! My fate is completely in your hands, Yugi. You'll decide this duel one way or another. Of course, if you don't surrender, I might be hurt. You wouldn't want that, would you? Stop it, Kaiba! You know this is dangerous! And now begins the making of what is, in my opinion, one of the most impactful moments that happens early on in the series. Yugi reasonably chimes in and says to Yami, we can't risk this attack. And there's a very quick back and forth before Yami decides to just attack, overriding Yugi's wishes. Surrender, Yugi. That is, unless you have the courage to unleash your attack. I must. I can't. We must. No, it's not right. Yugi! There must be another way. There isn't. So you have a struggle for control of what has now become a vessel, two souls, two individual human beings that inhabit one single body. And Yami trying to take reins of the vessel. Kaiba, I've never backed away! And I'm not starting now! Celtic Guardian, attack! Yugi, you can't! You can't take this risk! Call him back! Luckily, Yugi was able to take back control of his body in time to stop the attack. And that moment is what I really want to highlight. At this point, Yugi still knows very little about Yami. Yami doesn't even know who he is. Having his memory wiped, he does know that he is there for some reason, but he doesn't know why yet. Yugi still refers to him as spirit of the Millennium Puzzle, so they're still not too familiar with each other yet. And although Yugi got his wish from solving the Millennium Puzzle, it's clear he was not expecting the spirit of an Egyptian pharaoh to possess his body. So moments like this are where we see Yugi truly struggle to deal with this phenomenon, and it hits hard. I almost couldn't control it. This other presence deep inside me. He was willing to go all the way against Kaiba! Another presence? Inside you? What do you mean? What the heck are you talking about, buddy? Like me, Yugi has some sort of ancient spirit inside him. It has something to do with our Millennium items. I'm afraid of this spirit inside me. So afraid that I will never duel again! <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry about your grandpa. But you did the right thing. You couldn't hurt another person, not even to save him. See, you have to think. Yugi is still developing his relationship with Yami. And it's as if Yami and Yugi are going through a synchronization process. So you have a 16-year-old kid who's just trying to get by. Make friends. Make friends and develop as a human being. But on top of that, he has to deal with an ancient Egyptian spirit possessing his body. Before this confrontation with Kaiba, Yugi's been able to trust Yami for the most part. Yami didn't really show signs of being directly evil. Although being labeled as Dark Yugi and his horror roots 
in the early manga, portraying him as absolutely directly evil, just about. All that aside, in this iteration, it would be safe for Yugi to assume that Yami's a good guy. This guy, he's a good guy. He's a good fella. But this time it's different. Yami, for the lack of a better word, betrayed Yugi in this act. This wrecked Yugi, not just emotionally, but psychologically. Really what inspired me to go further with this was a comment that I saw someone leave on the Instagram post. And this person said, Yugi has a lot of fear in his mind. No, he has a lot of love in his heart. Because Yugi's not willing to have blood on his hands, no matter what the circumstance, even if it's to save his grandpa. Like Taya said, Yugi's grandpa wouldn't even want him to win that way anyways. And Yugi knows this as well. Yugi also knows that Kaiba was just trying to save his brother. Kaiba is just like him, fighting for the ones he loves. That's what I mean by Yugi has a lot of love in his heart. He has compassion and empathy and looks past the bullshit. And the person who said that is not entirely wrong. But I think just saying Yugi is fearful discredits and takes away from the true weight behind what's going on in these scenes. Because given the circumstances, if an ancient Egyptian spirit possessed your body and almost killed someone using your hands, you would most definitely probably freak out. Very intense. That's what hit me so hard. Yugi almost losing control. That struck a chord with me. It's just the idea of losing control.